Hello, today we'll be talking about graph filtering or filtering signals or features on a graph, especially for the purpose of denoising. Recall that if you have a graph or data that can be modeled as a graph, you can compute what's called a graph Laplacian. This graph Laplacian is either the degree minus adjacency matrix or some normalized version of it denoted L. If you eigen decompose this graph Laplacian into eigenvectors and eigenvalues, then you get frequency harmonics on the graph. Here's a visualization of the low frequency eigenvector, which for graph Laplacian is a low eigenvalued eigenvector. This can be visualized as a, as a slow moving signal on the graph. It's a smooth signal that's making one sweep through the uh, entire graph. Whereas a medium frequency eigenvector, which has a medium eigenvalue, can form more periods or uh, change faster. Whereas one of the highest eigenvalued eigenvectors of the graph Laplacian can encode very jumpy signal, uh, which can often be noise. Recall that the graph Laplacian is actually very related to the Markov matrix if we use a degree normalized version of the graph Laplacian. So the Markov affinity matrix is degree inverse times adjacency, and the graph Laplacian is just identity minus that quantity. These two matrices are actually very related. So actually, I'll show examples of using both matrices for data denoising. Um, they have the same eigenvectors. It's just that the ordering of the eigenvalues and therefore the eigenvectors is flipped. The eigenvalues are now 1 minus what they used to be for the Markov affinity matrix. So the low frequency eigenvectors in the Markov matrix have high eigenvalues and vice versa. So just keep that in mind. So just going with the traditional definition of graph Fourier transform, we go back to the graph Laplacian. The graph Fourier transform takes the eigenvectors of the graph Laplacian, transposes them, and takes the dot product or loads them onto some signal on your graph, which can be a feature that you measured of your data. And this gives you a frequency domain representation, which breaks your signal down into low, medium, and high frequency components. And this operation is also invertible. You can go back to this vertex domain representation of your signal. One of the reasons you might want to do this is to denoise your signal or modulate the frequency components. Here you see a signal that might have high frequency noise or low frequency noise, and you can correct that by modulating the frequency components. The general way you do that for a graph is to compute the graph Laplacian and find a function h, which is a filter function that modulates your eigenvalues. And then you can just apply this to the data. So what this is doing is if you have features in the columns of your data, it's taking each feature, it's loading it to uh, the graph Laplacian eigenvectors, and then changing the amplitude of that, and then loading it back. And that's really what's happening here, and that's how you apply this filter. Um, recall that we talked previously about the fact that in a lot of different kinds of data, the real signal in the data is quite low frequency, it changes slowly and it's kind of smooth, whereas many different kinds of noise are high frequency and, and you can take off uh, high frequency eigenvectors to restore the signal. So this kind of thing in general is called a low pass filter from in signal processing. A low pass filter leaves the low frequencies unchanged or at one and then when you get to really high frequencies it's diminishing them proportionally. Uh, the opposite trend is that is called a high pass filter and you can also have band pass and band stop filters. Today we'll be talking about low pass filters. Here's an example of a low pass filter constructed on the graph Laplacian. So here you are applying a function h to this matrix to create this frequency change and this is just given by e to the minus lambda. So if you have high eigenvectors it diminishes them more. Um, and so this is one way that you could apply it, which involves eigen decomposition, but I'll also be talking about a way that we came up with in our lab called magic that doesn't involve eigen decomposition and instead uses the diffusion operator. 
The motivation for magic is to uh, low pass filter gene signals on a cell cell graph so that you get rid of the noise in single cell RNA sequencing data. Recall that I talked to you about this kind of data before. Um, this kind of data has cells as the observations and gene transcript counts as the features, but that you get a small fraction of the total transcripts randomly. So it would look like every entry has randomly dropped out transcripts. And this gives this data quite a lot of noise. So what we do is first we create a diffusion operator using the normal steps of diffusion operator creation on this kind of data, calculate distances, convert them to affinities with a Gaussian kernel, and Markov normalize this. But once we do that, what we notice is if you power this Markov matrix, it actually implicitly creates a graph filter. This filter looks like this. It powers every eigenvalue to the power of t. And because this is on the diffusion operator, this is actually a low-pass filter. It's because it's leaving those high eigenvalues near 1 intact, and it's diminishing the low eigenvalues which correspond to high frequencies. So now, how do you apply this to the data? You can actually multiply the data matrix directly by this operator, and it will denoise it for you. If you want to think about low-pass filtering in the vertex domain, what you're actually doing is you're replacing whatever the value of that feature or signal is on that vertex with a weighted average of its diffusion neighbors, weighted by the diffusion probability from here to whichever vertex you're looking at. Um, and this is equivalent to graph Fourier transforming, applying the filter, and inverse Fourier transform. So this kind of filter has something you can, you can kind of alter as a knob. That's that power T. If your T is very high, you get a sharp low-pass filter. So the graph signal looks very, very smooth as you increase T. At low values of T, it's a less sharp filter. So this is one thing that you need to set. Um, so when we use this on the single cell RNA sequencing data, uh, we were able to restore signals, at, but also relationships between signals. These are two genes from the data set we were looking at, which was a breast cancer data set of breast cancer cells undergoing the epithelial to mesenchymal transition. It's a transition that happens during metastasis. So here we have these two genes, Vimentin and Ecadirin, and we also have another pair of genes, Vimentin and Snail, and there are known relationships between these, but you cannot tell this from this data because of the large amount of dropout uh, in the data and just general noise. So as we apply this filter with different values of T, you start to restore the relationships back. And in fact, the known relationships do look like this. Ecadirin and Vimentin have inverse relationships. Vimentin and Snail have positive relationships. And what's more is you can restore these nonlinear shapes of these signaling relationships with one another. Um, and we were actually able to validate the performance of magic on data set that did not actually have this kind of dropout. This is a developmental worm data set. We actually took the values, um, chopped off about 80% of them, so just stuck zeros in 80% of the values, which destroys the way the relationship looks and makes the data matrix very noisy. And we were able to impute the relationship back uh, with magic, which just denoises each of these gene signals on the graph. And so this actually shows how powerful this kind of uh, denoising and low-pass filtering of these signals on this graph is, which is one of the reasons why we call the method magic.